Hi, my name is Carlos Ferreira. I'm a principal offering manager with IBM Maximo Asset Monitor. I'm going to be giving an overview of the anomaly detection capabilities that are available in Maximo Asset Monitor. This is part one of a multi-part series. And today I'll be covering what is an anomaly and why are they important to businesses? And then how do you do anomaly detection at scale in your business? And what are the anomaly detection functions that you can apply and that will scale across different clients, different sites, different geographies, uh, different types of anomalies to detect them and prevent asset failure uh, by making you aware of those in time to address them via alerts. And then the third part of this will be around how do you actually configure Maximo Asset Monitor to enable these anomaly detector functions and then how to actually add them to your dashboard. I'll give an example of why these are important really from three different perspectives. One is the manufacturer that may be creating a pump, a motor, a drive that goes into an industrial system or process the manufacturer wants to reduce warranty costs, and by reducing warranty costs, he can improve his profitability. He wants to do that by detecting anomalies around improper pump installation, improper pump operation, for example, operating the pump in dry conditions, and by detecting whether or not maintenance has been done when it was supposed to be done uh, based on their warranty. Being able to detect anomalies around each one of these and be alerted about that so that they can address it before it becomes a problem is important to them in terms of reducing their warranty costs. They also want to be able to offer new services to their clients that are using their pumps so that they can avoid operating their pumps or installing their pumps in, in the wrong way. The second really perspective of why detecting anomalies is important are the clients, the clients that have assembled these different components into a, a, a process, a system uh, that they use to produce their own products or their own services. And they're motivated by similar anomalies, uh, but it's around uh, detecting you know, those so that they can reduce downtime of those assets and also increase the longevity, the life of those assets so that they don't have to replace them as quickly. Uh, the capital expenses for buying some of these assets is quite expensive. Finally, the third perspective on this is the service partners that are often working both with the manufacturer and the clients that are, are running these uh, assets. They are the ones who have to install these assets. They wanna do it in a way that they install them properly, that they can monitor that they've installed them properly so that they can reduce the number of callback times that they have to go back to the site to fix those pieces of equipment. Even if it is under warranty, those service providers wanna get insight into what are the types of anomalies they're detecting so that they can better triage and be prepared with the right pieces of equipment and the right workbooks that they need to be able to do the repairs once they get on site. Uh, and that improves their overall productivity. So those are some of the business drivers around why you want to detect anomalies. Um, so let's peel it down one more level. Um, a pump company, they know what the normal performance and operation performance curves are of their, of their pump based on the head, based on the flow, based on the um, energy consumption, based on the temperature of that pump if it starts getting too hot it means that uh, it may be operating in a dry condition. Uh, if it starts vibrating too much in the X or vibrating too much in the Y or Z direction, it may indicate that the seals are broken um, and, or the bearings need to be replaced. And so they are very interested in one understanding for the different type of pump. Uh, the individual pump may operate differently if it's a 60 horsepower pump versus a 90 horsepower pump. They wanna be able to identify for a certain type of pump under certain operating modes, not during startup when it's naturally gonna vibrate, not when it's shut down when it's naturally gonna vibrate, but when it's during normal operations, they wanna be able to detect vibrations 
because these could be an indicator of seals being broken. So the important things there are isolating it down to an asset, isolating it down to a metric that you can monitor, and knowing the modes of when that anomaly happens to be able to uh, realize it's a true anomaly, it's not a false alert. Now imagine the scale problem in terms of not just doing this for one individual pump, but doing this for multiple pumps, a chiller, a motor, a conveyor belt, all of these systems operating in conjunction together with all these different SCADA systems and alarm subpoints being triggered because they're very hard coded, it can become overwhelming in terms of hours to be able to sift through all these alarms to really get to the root cause of what the problem was. So you need a way to be alerted and understand what are normal operating conditions and what are not normal operating conditions. So there's quite a few challenges that arise as a result of this. One is just getting visibility into these different pieces of equipment that are running. Some uh, equipment manufacturers will actually include a set of um, meters on their on their pieces of equipment so that they can be monitored. And they share those meters um, and that metered information with, with the clients. And so, you know, having access to that data is important and avoiding data loss from that individual piece of equipment into that SCADA system, from that SCADA system up to a historian, from the historian ultimately up to the cloud or potentially an on-premise deployment of a monitoring solution. You've got to make sure there's data connectivity there, no data loss. So data loss is an anomaly that you should be looking for, and it's actually one that's included in Maximal Asset Monitor. Once you do have an anomaly, how are you alerted about that? How do you detect it? So there's going to be some way of scoring or understanding, you know, it is an anomaly, how severe is it? You want to avoid false alerts like I was mentioning earlier in terms of that pump operation when it shuts down or starts up. And, and you want to do this in a way that it makes sense in terms of um, how the pumps sh should be operated. You want to get all this uh, data and organized in a way that you can see it by site, by, by location, for example, by system. Uh, so being able to classify these is important. And you want to get it in a timely way. Uh, many of these uh, alerts, if you do not get them or anomalies, if you not detect, detect them, respond to them within a certain amount of time, sometimes there's actually regulatory compliance issues that you face uh, by not getting a, a problem addressed within a certain time period. Uh, or worse, it could mean that the system's going to have a fatal um, anomaly, an error, which will cause the, the system to actually get shut down. So Maximal Asset Monitor provides the ability to collect these metrics from these real time series metrics from devices, from SCADA systems, uh, through an ingestion system that we provide. Uh, and then we have an, a data processing capability, which applies analytic functions as well uh, as well as other uh, functions, data cleansing, for example, if you wanted to. Um, and you can be notified about these in terms of detecting certain conditions uh, when in that meter data. You can also connect to external services. We include a catalog, and this is where we put our anomaly detection functions in a catalog that you can search and add and apply to your meter data that comes in. And we have a set of dashboards that will render the anomalies in the alerts and the meet and also the raw meter data as well in a summary dashboards. So today I'm going to focus primarily on the anomaly dashboards uh, that we're going to be creating, but you can uh, see other videos that are available out there on uh, Maximal Asset Monitor for an overview. So for anomaly detection functions that are included, they have a life cycle. They operate and you will, in some cases, there's there's two types of models. There's statistical based models. Uh, and then there's regression based machine learning based models that we include with Maximal Asset Monitor. Some of these require uh, historical data for being trained. The data preparation is really around making sure you don't have data loss, for example, that you pick the right metrics, that you pick the right metadata in terms of how to analyze these models. The algorithms are often uh, provided by companies like IBM, and some of these are even uh, well-known open source library uh, anomaly and statistical 
patterns that are available that have been codified into functions that can then be applied to your meter data as it comes in. These functions are, you know, are tested with this historical data. Once they're proven to work, they get uh, deployed into your anomaly detection pipeline. And these generate scores, and these scores are, are what ultimately are used to create alerts. And these alerts are what end up getting rendered in addition to where they're happening on the time series data so that you can take action to resolve those. Um, these often sometimes for the regression-based models are based on making predictions and seeing how close you get to the predictions. So we'll talk more about that. So that's the first step 